We march for a permanent ceasefire. We march to lift the siege on Gaza. We march to demand aid be allowed into Gaza. We march for our prisoners held in Zionist jail. And we march for our martyrs to honor their sacrifice. Intifada, Intifada. People's Dispatch. I'm here in the heart of Manhattan. There are thousands of protesters behind me. We're here in the pouring rain here on an international day of action for Palestine. March 2nd. Today marks a week before March 10th, the scheduled Israeli invasion of Rafa. These thousands of protesters are joining millions across the world who are protesting this impending invasion as well as the ongoing massacre of Palestinians. As of now, over 30,000 Palestinians have been killed by the Zionist state. Uh, these protesters are standing in solidarity with Palestine, demanding a, an end to U.S. aid to Israel, rain or shine, and of course, demanding the liberation of Palestine. Rain, shine, snow, heat wave. We are here because we are committed to the total liberation of the Palestinian people. Ceasefire is the least of our demands. It is the immediate and urgent demand. But we are here against colonialism and we are here against U.S. Empire. We are here because we know who our enemy is. Because they've shown us who they are. They are in the White House. They are in the Pentagon. They are in Congress. There is no more time for us to waver. Every single day moving forward, we have to build this movement. Because right now, we're in a critical moment. The scumbag politicians the criminals who choose to spend our taxes on war rather than education, health care, and housing. They're feeling the pressure more than ever. So it is our task and our duty to make their support for Israel absolutely unsustainable. And this is also where hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers are taking a stand on the right side of history. It's been five months now of non-stop mobilization, of building this movement, of shifting the consciousness of this entire country. And comrades, today we're proving that we will continue for as long as it takes. Today we show that we're not just a group of people that will stay home when there's a ceasefire. No, comrades, we're here to demonstrate our eternal commitment to the Palestinian cause. Our eternal commitment to the cause of anti-imperialism. Because this moment is a turning point of world historical significance. And we must seize it. And we must create the conditions for revolution. It is not, it is not that I am unafraid as I stand here with you. I am afraid. But I am more afraid of what will continue to happen to humanity if more of us do not speak up, make noise, show up, take action, and let these people in power know and accept that the power of the people shall prevail. The veils have been lifted and more and more people are waking up to the realities of the violent colonial settler project that is the United States of America and understand its connection to the violent colonial settler project that is the state of Israel, the genocides in Palestine, the Congo, Sudan, Haiti, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and beyond. Fighting for justice can be lonely work. It can be exhausting, but nothing compared to what is happening in Gaza. 
in Rafa for the Palestinian people that have been going through this for 75 years. Speaking inconvenient truths can lose you your livelihood. It can lose you friends. It may lose you family. But I want you to look out now at this sea of umbrellas and people here, because we are your family. You are not alone. As he said, there are hundreds more across Manhattan, hundreds of thousands across the United States, millions globally who are standing for Palestine for justice for a ceasefire. Millions of people who will keep showing up, who will keep organizing, who will keep speaking out, who will be loud. And we must embrace each other and thank each other and encourage other people to be brave and come out for what will ultimately be proven to be on the right side of history. We're witnessing a sea change in consciousness in the United States for the first time, for the first time since the Nakba, since 1948. You have literally millions of Americans who are standing with Palestine. How did that happen? There were two main factors. One, people could witness the genocide themselves. They could see it on social media. For the first time in human history, the masses of people in the United States and around the world could witness a genocide in real time. And secondly, there has been a mass protest movement. And when people see masses of people like the demonstration today, 50,000 strong right in New York City in the pouring rain, when they see people coming together, that moves them. That creates new energy. That's a light bulb that goes on in people's minds. So the consciousness is spreading because the struggle is spreading. Consciousness is formed because of struggle. And what we see in the United States is a mass movement of struggle standing with Palestine. I understand that so many of you are afraid of so many different things, of difficult conversations, of having your job terminated. But none of this, none of this compares to the pain of our martyrs, of our families, to the grief of our loved ones in Gaza, to the sacrifices so many people have committed here in the United States, as we saw in Washington, D.C., where Aaron Bushnell set himself in fire, and in Palestine, where people are burned by American-made weapons. The time is now to organize, to liberate, we are past persuasion. We are past begging and pleading. Thank you and Israel.